So how do you charge your car on solar power alone? Well, first thing is you need a whole bunch of solar panels. In this case, I've got 64 100 watt panels. I've got four parallel connections and each one is 16 in series. And those are connected through this PV wire, photovoltaic, in through where the normal tow hitch would be. And this is the only modification I made to the car is to drill that hole so those wires can come into this all-in-one inverter charge controller. It's got two charge controllers, PV1, PV2. They're both MPPT charge controllers, which stands for Maximum Power Point Tracker. And what that does is it tracks the optimal voltage current level for each string to get the most power, as opposed to an MPPT, which is a pulse width modulated, which essentially is turning it on and off really quick at a high frequency to match battery voltage and charge. Those are not very efficient. There's a lot of energy just lost. I've seen them run about 70%, whereas an MPT, MPPT, I've, I've seen it actually exceed the rated power of the panel. So very efficient and the best way to go. In this case, I've got two of them. Each one's 5,000 watts and my array is 6,400. So I've split that across two. So I have plenty of overhead for power. And with two uh, charge controllers, if one array is kind of in the shade a little bit, it can each one can find the optimal point for each array. So having multiple charge controllers is a nice benefit. In this case, however, since everything is uh, so symmetric, they should all be about the same and it's probably not helping me any, but it's a good thing to have. Those go in here. I have four for the first charge controller, four for the next charge controller, two positive, two negative. They're parallel here, so I could, technically I don't need all eight. I could have simply four and I could do parallel connections externally. However, this was a nice clean way to do it and it gives me a lot of flexibility to run extra cable wherever I need it, set up multiple arrays in different areas. And I can always use parallel connections out here as well. Then once you have that connected, you have the load. And this is a 240 volt, so I have uh, load, neutral, ground, and per the manual, I have neutral and ground uh, connected. And essentially what that ends up with is a NEMA 1450 connection. However, instead of having two hot legs at 120 volts that could be combined to 240 or um, connected through the, the uh, neutral to be 120. So typically you have 120 or you could have 120 or go across the two hots and get 240. In my scenario, I'm more like a NEMA 15, 515, like a regular 120 outlet, where you have a hot, a neutral, and a ground, and then you connect the neutral and the ground so that the charge controller sees a ground. So essentially that's what I've got. So I've got a hot, one of these is a neutral, and it's connected to the ground, which is what you're seeing right here. And that goes into this uh, receptacle here that is directly connected to the Tesla charge controller. And that's it, everything is controlled. Uh, automatically. I've got this auxiliary battery and it can feed power into the system or be charged. And typically what I do is I set my vehicle charge current such that it's a little less than peak charge. So right now I'm at 5.3 solar in and just under four going to the five, four kilowatts going to the car and one kilowatt going to the battery. So what I like to do is start off in the morning where I'm drawing a little bit from the battery then at noon, the, uh, it's depleting the battery. Then around noon, it starts charging the battery as solar is overproducing. And then in the evening, it's underproducing and it draws from the battery again. So I can have a nice, steady, constant draw on the system and not have to modulate the charge rate of the Tesla. Now, the real question is, why don't I just connect the solar panels directly to the vehicle battery? And that would definitely be optimal. All you really need is an MPPT charge controller that then boosts the voltage to the vehicle voltage of 400 volts, and preferably one that could go through the communication port and connect directly to the uh, factory charge port. However, no one really makes that right now. So to do that, you would have to build it yourself and you'd have to tie into the high voltage electronics on the car, which is not something I'm comfortable doing or able to do, but it could be done. And it would be much smaller, much simpler the charge controller would probably be about a third of this all-in-one unit here, and you wouldn't need the battery, and it would be more efficient. You wouldn't be going DC to AC back to DC. You would simply take the direct current in, modulate the voltage coming in for maximum power, and then boost that voltage to the vehicle, 
and charge the car. However, because solar is very variable with clouds, you need some way to communicate with the vehicle to tell it how much current it could draw, and that would constantly be fluctuating. I don't know the communication speed at which you can fluctuate the current going into the vehicle, but I imagine it should be possible to have um, something not too much bigger than the mobile charger control here that would directly connect to your PV MC4 connectors and start charging the vehicle. That would definitely be ideal, and I'd love it if someone would make something like that. But it doesn't exist, so this is what we're stuck with right now. The main advantage to this system, however, is I do have exportable AC. So if I wanted to connect something that was 240 volts, I could. Or the transformer, I could jump it down to 120 volts and run any household appliance simultaneously. So that's what we've got, and that's how I charge my car on solar power alone.